want to apologize to everyone. I think we had a bit of a glitch at the start and we thought we were live and we weren't. So um, all my chat at the beginning, I don't think anyone actually heard it. So I do think we are live at the moment um, and we were live just at the start of your um, presentation, Aoife. So I'm hoping everyone did get that much. Um, but I might just welcome everyone again to the Smart Valve Rigging Community webinar because I, I believe that we, we've just started over the last five minutes. So my introduction was was missed there. Apologies, everyone. Um, you might just, if, if attendees are uh, able to hear us now, you might just let us know in the Q&A function. You might just pop in a, a little question to let us know that you can actually hear us. Um, that would be that would be great if you could do that. Um, I might just ask Ashton Lennon to put the the Menti um, poll back up if you don't mind. Um, so we might just share it's menti.com. Um, and we were asking attendees for this uh, smart public and webinar. We were asking attendees to um, take part in our live poll and let us know um, who's in the audience. So you just go on to menti.com and you type in um, with the code. So we'll just do that for the moment and hopefully everyone can now hear us and that we're, we're live. Um, so apologies for that. Um, and for everyone that didn't uh, get my introduction. I'd just like to say hello and welcome. My name is Ashton Highland and I'm Digital Strategy Manager with Fingal County Council. Today we have a number of speakers. You've just heard there from Aoife Sheridan who gave a very brief overview of the Smart World Brigham Programme Framework and the Public Trello Board which is um, which is a live board that that gives lots of information of the various different projects we're working on in the district and it's uh, viewable for the public that they can check and uh, look at all the different types of projects and give us in, input and uh, ideas as to what we might focus on for the Smart Brigham district. So this is just a, a live poll we're doing now so that's great at least some people I know are hearing us because I can see they've taken part in the poll. Um, that's great and I think we have, yeah, we have a number of questions coming in so that's great too. Um, yeah, so for today's webinar we are using Microsoft Teams and we have the Q&A so we just ask people to input their questions in, into the Q&A function of the chat so that's, so I think it's a little a uh, bubble icon with a question mark. If you can find that uh, on your screen, click on it and type in your questions. Um, and we will, I just sat seeing a question there, send the Trello link at some point, thanks. So we'll we'll uh, post the, the link to the Trello board shortly. Um, now that I know we're live and people can hear us, I'm going to pass on to the next speaker. So phew, always technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, that's great. Right, so thanks very much Aoife for your presentation and we will have all of these slides ready for, for, um, for everyone at the end. So if you did miss any of the start of Aoife's um, chat uh, presentation, we, we will have that available to view. Uh, now I'm just going to pass on to Brefni O'Rourke who's going to chat to us about some of the really interesting smart spaces. So thanks very much Ashling. Um, my name is Brefni O'Rourke. I'm the program manager for the Alba Rigan Rejuvenation um, Project. I work in the Economic Enterprise, Culture and Tourism Department of Fingal County Council and I'm delighted to be with you here this evening. Um, so look at uh, what we have here is a picture of beautiful Balbriggan. Uh, this particular picture was taken by uh, one of our very keen uh, amateur photographers locally, uh, Tony Healy. Uh, it adorns the wall here beside me uh, in the hub in George's Square. 
Uh, and you can see uh, the main thoroughfare uh, kind of running through Valbriggan uh, and the fact, of course, that it's a, a beautiful coastal location with a harbour and a you know, beach just situated behind the uh, main street itself, uh, particularly for those not familiar with the area. So if you just pass on to the next slide, please. So look at a little bit about uh, future spaces um, and in particular I'll go into some of the smart spaces which we're considering. Um, there's a huge amount of resources available on Balbriggan.ie, uh, which is the Our Balbriggan homepage, uh, again in regards to the rejuvenation process uh, and the plans for the future. Uh, this particular slide, the town rejuvenation map, that details the various different uh, elements. Uh, there's nine elements listed there uh, of physical transformation, uh, which are planned for these next uh, few years. So uh, over the next three to five years, we really are embarking on uh, uh, an exciting journey in terms of uh, the town, uh, its transformation and some really exciting propositions, uh, you know, within those uh, you know, nine physical parts uh, of the plan. So Ashley, if you want to move on there, please. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, smart spaces or hub, um, I'm coming from you uh, this evening from uh, the building on the left, uh, the Alba Brigham hub. Um, Fingal County Council opened that at the beginning of last year. Uh, it's very much, its purpose very much to be the engine room in terms of the uh, rejuvenation. Uh, and as uh, key county council staff, uh, you know, based there in terms of the responsibility for driving uh, the propositions forward. Uh, Fingal County Council repurposed uh, that unit from a, a vacant unit uh, on the square. Um, so that unit and its space, uh, you know, in, in, in the time to come will be uh, a place where people will be able to drop in, collaborate, uh, you know, and many of the initiatives which uh, Aoife detailed or indeed you can see in the Trello board in your own time uh, regards to smart initiatives, uh, you know, will be, uh, you know, uh, be driven from, uh, you know, the space in the heart of the community. Uh, the space there to your right, uh, that's 24 Dublin Street, it's just across the road here from, uh, you know, the square beside the courthouse. Uh, so we're moving towards a proposition, uh, you know, with those, uh, you know, properties uh, in terms of uh, moving towards uh, a, a strength and civic quarter, a place uh, which will be a focus for the creative arts, where there'll be artists uh, studios in the, in the large house, uh, an open courtyard to the back, um, where there'll be uh, public access in terms of exhibitions and performances. Uh, and a commercial unit uh, to the right. Uh, we're working with uh, various different educational institutes and different partners, and that will be opened uh, in terms of being a digital maker space, so a place where uh, you know will be associated with excellence, and we'd hope to grow uh, the whole um, the whole ecosystem around uh, you know uh, you know people and skills, uh, and give them access to the very best of uh, technologies and equipment to equip them for uh, the new economies, which uh, you know we know are coming up in. Our, um, in our new change world, basically. Uh, can I, next slide, please, Ashling. So in terms of some of our other future spaces, I'm not going to go through them all. Um, last year, the uh, Fingal County Council acquired the uh, derelict properties uh, loan locally as the Bruins. Uh, you know, they're very large size uh, properties, derelict. Um, behind the properties, uh, the facade of properties, uh, is a hectare of green space. Uh, so in the next uh, you know, few months and years, uh, we're moving from a feasibility, uh, you know, where we're looking to open up uh, what is a wonderful uh, green space and amenity in terms of the River Bracken, uh, you know, running through uh, you know, that hectare of greenlands, uh, you know, to a new reimagined uh, Key Street and a transformed harbour, which we'll come on to shortly. In terms of the, uh, the street edge itself, uh, there'll be a green corridor in terms of uh, parklands, but also we're looking uh, in terms of smart spaces, we want to be cognizant of the new environment 
uh, you know, we're in in terms of, uh, you know, hybrid working uh, and remote working. So we're going through various different feasibilities at the moment, uh, you know, about the uh, development or developments, uh, you know, which will also uh, form part of that space uh, and equip uh, the town uh, and the town's talent and employees with, uh, you know, a really quality space, uh, you know, which have a social uh, and economic and a community function. Um, so if we move on from that, please, Ashling. Uh, so this is the last space uh, or slide. I'm not going to talk too much about this because we have the 3D model, but uh, uh, you know this uh, you know really uh, uh, demonstrates our iconic uh, you know viaducts and the uh, some of the quality propositions that we're we're moving forwards. Uh, but in, in summary, uh, the the town transformation includes uh, you know uh, you know some really really interesting and exciting propositions from the town. Uh, and amongst that, we'll be looking to uh, uh, you know, engineer and uh, work in smart spaces and equip us uh, you know, for the future uh, and future needs of the town. So thank you. I'll leave it there. That's great. Thanks, uh, Brefni. Um, yeah, as Brefni mentioned there, there's, there's lots of different smart spaces and um, to kind of visualise them, we've now um, gone on and developed uh, a 3D model of Balbriggan, which will be able to showcase some of those projects that um, Brefni mentioned. So even though maybe some of these uh, spaces might not be um, physically uh, created or available at the moment, we'll be able to visualize them in the 3D model. So in 2020, we were successful with securing funding from the Public Service Innovation Fund to develop this model um, for Balbriggan. And um, we've just have uh, a, just a little preview of the model now that I, I'll showcase.
um, I suppose that just gives you a snapshot of the model. It is um, bigger itself. Um, it will be, we're launching the model at the end of this month. So you'll be able to go on to the web viewer and interact with the model, look at the different elements of it. And um, it is built on a open uh, data platform as well. So you'll be able to, I suppose, um, play around with the model. And when we eventually do get into like in-person events, whenever that might may be in the future, um, we will, be able to use the model in a 3D um, virtual reality type uh, simulation, so using VR headsets as well. Um, yeah, so all the all the future developments and future um, public realm projects can be visualised before they actually become um, become to uh, fr fruition. So it's just a, an interactive way to, I suppose, visualise. Um, a town, it's a digital twin as such. Um, so I'm going to just pass on. I know we've got a lot of speakers to get to, so I'm, I'm going to pass on to Ashling Lennon next, who's going to, he's from Smart Dublin, who's going to um, talk to us a little about one of the projects around uh, Weekend. Thanks very much, Ashling, uh, and hi, folks. As Ashling said, my name is Ashling Lennon, and I work for Smart Dublin. So uh, Smart Dublin is an initiative of the four Dublin local authorities and uh, I'm delighted to be a part of the steering committee for, for Smart Balbriggan. I um, want to talk to you very briefly this evening uh, about um, a citizen science project that Smart Balbriggan are supporting called WeCount. Um, so WeCount is an EU funded project, um, but it's taken place here in Ireland, uh, Wales, Spain, Belgium and Slovenia. And uh, the Irish part of the project is led by a, a researcher from UCD named Francesco Pila. Francesco unfortunately couldn't be here with us tonight, uh, but if you want to learn a bit more about him and his work, you can find him on Twitter. He's at F underscore Pila. That's at F underscore P-I-L-L-A. And he's really passionate about environmentalism, uh, about sustainability, and I suppose most particularly about citizen science. So about bringing um, research and science into the community. So the WeCount project is all about empowering uh, citizens to take part in collecting important data that relates to their own communities. And in, in this case, we're talking about mobility data. So that's information that relates to, to transport and how vehicles move around the community. And we're looking for a, a few volunteers from Balbriggan to take part. Ashley, if you could just jump onto the next slide. Um, and the way it works is very simple. So volunteers from uh, across Europe who want to take part are given a small sensor device that's called a Telram. And you can see it here in the picture. Uh, you just pop it on your window and it faces out onto the road. And the sensor device is a type of camera inside. And that camera is able to count and to classify traffic that passes by. So the device can count pedestrians, cyclists, cars and, and heavy uh, goods vehicles. Now, while it is a type of camera, it's not like a regular camera. It doesn't take photos. It's not CCTV. It doesn't uh, record any images or any footage. Uh, what it does is that it counts and classifies. So it's able to look out and recognize uh, objects. So the only information that's stored is uh, statistical count information where the camera is saying that's one bike, there's two pedestrians, there's four vans. And all of that statistical information is then sent up into the cloud. Uh, and then that data is visualized on the WeCount website. So if you're a volunteer and you have one of these little lads sitting in your sitting room window looking out onto the road, uh, you can log on to the WeCount website and you can see a visualization of the traffic data around your area. And then you can also zoom out and have a look around Dublin and around other European uh, cities too. Next slide, please, Ashling. So um, as I said, we're looking for some volunteers to take part. Um, why we're supporting it? Well, we think it's a, it's a good idea for a few reasons. We think for citizens, as we all know too well, we're living in an increasingly uh, technology and data driven world. And the whole idea behind this project is around empowering um, people to use this new technology to collect data about their own communities. And later on in the year, um, Francesco, the lead researcher, he's going to do some workshops with the participants to, to look at the data and to read the data and to come up with some potential um, solutions for some transport issues in, in people's communities. And that information will be fed back into the councils. 
Obviously, for researchers, it's a huge benefit in that um, the scientists all over Europe who are a part of this project, they'll be able to look at data from the different cities and they'll be able to create scientific knowledge uh, in the field, obviously, of, of mobility. And then for us as, as, as the council, it's great for us to be able to see more information about um, traffic within the community. And it's very beneficial for our traffic and roads and active travel teams. Uh, they might be able to see where there's hotspots or where there's opportunities for in interventions and so on. So that was a whistle stop tour of the Weekham project, Ashley, and I know we're still through time. If anybody wants more information on it, just pop on to the balbregan.ie website and you'll see the post volunteer is needed for WeCount initiative. And um, if you want more technical info uh, about the device or about privacy or anything like that, just go to the WeCount website. So that's we-count.net. It's a volunteer project. There's no cost to take part. The device will be sent to you for free. But you will need uh, a window that's looking out onto a road where traffic passes, an unobscured window, I should say, so no trees. Um, and then you'll also need Wi-Fi. The device is connected to the internet and it needs to be plugged in, but it's it only uses about the same amount of power as a phone charger. So give us an email on smart.balbregan at fingall.ie if you're interested in taking part. We don't have a huge amount of sensors, so they'll be distributed on a first come, first serve basis. And that's it for me, Ashling. That's great. Thanks, Ashling. Um, I'm going to now pass on to Will Ferguson of SIGFOX, uh, who's going to tell us a bit about the new IoT network that has been installed in Bob Rigan. Hi Ashley, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak today. So yeah, today I wanted to start off and talk about a, t a term that uh, you might be familiar with, you might, you might not be familiar with. It's called the Internet of Things. Um, so the Internet of Things describes the idea that absolutely everything in the future in the physical world around us will be connected to the digital world. So that's everything from, you know, the, 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 the table in front of you now to the car outside, to the uh, parking spaces where the car parks, to the street lights, road signage, lighting in homes, lighting on streets, etc. So everything will be connected to the internet at some stage. And that's essentially what the Internet of Things describes. Um, so at VT, we operate in the in this space, um, and uh, what we do is we provide additional options for all these things to connect to the internet. So if you think about it, there's there's lots of ways you can connect something to the internet. We'd all be familiar with Wi-Fi um, in our homes or in our businesses. Uh, so that's one way to connect things. But the 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 issue with Wi-Fi is that it's confined to um, an area where there's a Wi-Fi network. So it's not ideal for connecting everything, really good for connecting things in the home or maybe in the business. But if you've got uh, um, objects or sensors or things that are dispersed over a large geographical area, uh, you might necessarily have Wi-Fi. Um, another option is, is cellular. So we all know about the cellular networks. Uh, we connect our phones every day. You've got 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Again, great technologies, but they're all designed um, with uh, uh, complexity because they're they're uh, catered for uh, transmitting voice and video, which is a lot of data. Um, but you know, for the Internet of Things, the idea is that we'll be connecting a lot of uh, uh, objects and sensors that only require very small amounts of data and uh, they don't need a very powerful connection. So the, what we specialize in VT is, is, is actually a technology called 0G. So it's the opposite to 5G. It's connecting or it's a network that allows you to connect uh, your, your sensors to the internet that only require very small amounts of bandwidth. So it's very specialized in what it does. It's all about simplicity, connecting uh, objects and sensors that require small amounts of bandwidth and that means that because it's specialized in doing that, it does it very well. It does it at a very low cost and consuming very small amounts of power, which is important if you want to try and connect everything around you, uh, because you're not necessarily going to have a connection for all these things that are around us. Um, so what we've done in Balbriggan is we've set up a, uh, a test bed um, and we've done this actually with a lot of the universities around the country and uh, some of the other town councils around the country and in Dublin. And that allows companies to, to test and use this technology and develop products that, uh, that um, uh, connect things that traditionally it wasn't really possible or it didn't make sense to connect to the internet. Um, so we're welcoming and encouraging companies 
to 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 use the the network in Valbriggan um, and uh, and will provide support and everything they need to essentially help them on their journey of uh, IoT. And we've been doing this for a while now. We've got lots of different programs and resources available. Uh, so we'd encourage any companies in the area who are in the technology space to get in touch and we can have a, a conversation about it and hopefully we can we can help. Um, and uh, from from the perspective of uh, the inhabitants in Balbriggan, hopefully over the next uh, number of years, you'll see these applications and the use of this type of technology uh, embedded in you know everyday life and 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 use cases that make things easier essentially so yeah that's that's all i want to talk about today really that's great that's thanks great. will um I, I have already a couple of people asking how can they get in touch and how can they um get in touch about the iot network so i might suggest that they email in smart balbriggan so it's smart dot balbriggan at fingal.ie and then I suppose will then we can put them either directly in touch with you yourself or whatever that might be instead of me giving out all your yeah. contact details. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and it's so simple to get set up. Uh, you just need to buy an evaluation kit on any from any of the um, of the technology suppliers uh, um, uh, here and and obviously online and uh, and we can we can get you hooked up to the network immediately. So it's it's very simple. Great. Um, that's brilliant. That's and we brilliant. might actually get some of that information up onto the public Trello board as well. I think it's probably already up, but um, for any of the contact information, we'll just we'll just point to there for everyone. Um, thanks very much. I'm going to just pass on now to our next speaker. So we have Sophie Benoit and Caitlin uh, Hafer, Hafer, I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing either of those names right, so apologies. Um, from what the heck, so please correct me if I've said your name wrong there. <laughs> no, 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 you got it right, Hafer. Hafer, okay. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. I don't know because I never say it, I just say Caitlin. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for having us. Uh, so as you said, we are with the hack, so I'm Sophie Benoit and here is Caitlin. Uh, so we're here to talk about the uh, hackathon that we're going to organize, but first, who we are. So I, um, Sophie, as I said, I'm Frenchy and I have a business background. Um, I have a business background, but I also have a lot of sense of ethic. And I think the businesses and the way we operate, the way businesses are operating at, um, at the moment are a little bit not efficient and we think that to solve those problems we should bring people together so that's uh my background you can say uh so i'm kim and my background is actually in performing arts originally and then veered off into marketing and tech and business uh through that so my side of things is to bring people together to be creative and come up with new ideas and organize events and do a lot of cheering and helping people are telling people what they should be doing and uh, in being the enthusiastic uh, energy in the room. So together we are with that and we put together now all virtual, hopefully soon, uh, not all virtual hackathon events for people. Okay. So it's going to explain. Yeah, so what is a hackathon? Uh, it's a bit scary, but that's just because it comes from the Silicon Valley and at the beginning it was just of lots of uh, developers drinking coffee and hacking things. So we just took the name and the best practices. Uh, so a hackathon is a group of people that will. Oh, is, am I freezing? OK, so a hackathon is a group of people that join to work on a project. So those people are from different backgrounds with different skills and set of skills and mindset and uh, different interests. And they will work on this project together for a period of time. And for this hackathon, it will be for two days. And at the end of this hackathon, what we expect is to come up with either solutions or new processes um so it's only bringing people that are motivated and curious and just want to have an impact and especially for this hackathon have an impact in their community uh because you don't really get the 
time or maybe the, the possibility to meet with other people. And this hackathon is just uh, the tool that would give you the opportunity to do so. So what you can expect in a little um, more detail for this event, we'll put you together with teams uh, so you don't need to come in with a team already made. Uh, if you just want to come in as an individual, we will pair you up with other people. Uh, you guys will work together to find a problem and then discuss it, figure out your solution, and then pitch it to a panel of judges at the end. So it's a really like sprint of a two days, um, but you get a lot of good life skills out of it and you get to know that you created something that helped your community. Um, next one. Thank you. Uh, so you can gain, like I just said, uh, you can gain community involvement, some life experiences, and be able to say, I have an impact on your world. Who knows, maybe you'll come back in uh, 10 years to Waldbergen and look at the new beautiful facade and say, oh, that was my idea at the hackathon. So how you get involved, it's easy. You can sign up. Uh, we have an Eventbrite page, um, and we will put the link somewhere accessible. Um, and so you can just go on there. It'll be held uh, virtually, so you don't even need to leave your house. You can join in your pajamas um, and that's it. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Um, next, I think we have one more after that. Sign up, Re reasserting that. There you go. You'll get a link to our server and we'll send you lots of information throughout. Um, and then you'll only have to join the first workshop virtually on the first day. And I send scads of emails to everyone who participates. So if you sign up, you will not get lost you will we'll be sure that you have you know everything that you need and everywhere you need to be um and i will remind you over and over and over to be there so next one thank you that's great caitlin and sophie thanks so much um now that i know what a hackathon is um why are we doing one <laughs> <laughs> and um it's great uh, that people can get involved and we post up the information of the website but maybe brefney you'll give us a bit more information on the smart bulb and hackathon and what the themes and the focus is thanks so much ashling and uh thanks sophie and caitlin uh from what the hack we're really looking forward to working with you uh and i can see that it's going to be bags of energy and bags of fun already so so look at, um, first off, there's plenty of lead in time to this. Uh, it's not until June, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, the links will be made available and, uh, you know, we've been messaging before that, but uh, really this is a call to action for ye on the call, uh, you know, to different networks and for different people to, uh, you know, spend some time, I guess, reflecting and thinking uh, about Balbriggan, uh, their Balbriggan, our Balbriggan, uh, about how we can make it an even better place to live. So in terms of uh, the Smart Balbriggan and the Our Balbriggan, we've been looking at uh, what's called problem statements and we'll have three challenges which we'll be uh, going through uh, at the hackathon itself. So in terms of the problem statements, look at um, there's a rejuvenation process uh, in Balbriggan for a reason uh, and that's because the town for various different reasons, uh, you know, isn't or hasn't been meeting its full potential of late. Um, in terms of the first problem statement, um, <clears throat> I'll read it there. I mean, during the 2000s, there's obviously been a uh, large expansion uh, in terms of the uh, town's population. Uh, amenities have not kept their pace. Uh, the local economy is relatively weak uh, compared to uh, comparable areas. Uh, you know, so in terms of the problem uh, which we need to solve, uh, if the right investment is not made in the right places, uh, Balbriggan will fail to reach its fullest potential and achieve its vision. We have a plan, um, but uh, in terms of that uh, reaching its full potential, uh, investment in the right places, uh, you know, there's always room for creativity, uh, you know, uh, additional thinking, uh, and that's really what we want to bring to the fore in terms of this uh, hackathon. Uh, secondly, uh, and equally important, uh, you know, something which, uh, you know, um, we also want to, uh, you know, discuss and understand and uh, look at the challenge involved. I mean, Balbriggan uh, has uh, unfortunately uh, unfairly uh, been seen by some uh, and is portrayed by others as a place 
uh, which may be undesirable at times or, or, or even unsafe. Uh, the reality is if a narrative uh, you know, of the town uh, continues to persist and uh, you know, Balbriggan uh, you know, is associated with such negative perceptions, uh, you know, then the rejuvenation will fail to reach its full potential and achieve its vision. So, so that's really important, I think. Um, in terms of the, uh, the actual challenges themselves, uh, just very quickly, uh, economy, how do we make Balbriggan an investment destination? Culture, how do we foster and develop a thriving creative arts and culture sector? And lastly, community, how do we build a stronger cohesive environment community? So there will be a call to action. Uh, I'm making one now, get involved, uh, you know, get involved in the journey uh, and there'll be plenty of opportunities uh, in between now and June uh, in terms of uh, you know, joining us on that. So thanks so much and back to you, Ashley. And um, that's great. Thanks very much, Brefni. Um, I am conscious that we we missed um, our first presenter. Most of the people on the call missed our first presenter um, because we had some technical difficulties. We thought we were live, but we were just talking to ourselves, so it's very embarrassing. Um, so I'm now going to just ask or invite Aoife Sheridan again to just I suppose give us a really short uh, overview of her presentation and the program framework which has been launched uh, today and that people can view I suppose in more detail but if we can get a, a very brief overview and then I just ask everyone there is a Q&A after Aoife's session so about any of the question, uh, any of the presentations you've heard from any of the speakers, if you have a question, do post it. I'm going to be looking at them all now and I'll my cherry cherry pick one or two for our speakers after this um, after Eva's presentation. So I'll hand over to yourself, Eva. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ashling. Um, so good you want me twice. I know I'm brilliant. <laughs> and apologies to everyone. I was chattering away and didn't realise I was talking to myself, you know. Um, I'll just give you a quick run through of, of what uh, of what my presentation was. Um, you, you'll have heard a lot of it covered already between other things. Um, so in terms of Smart Balbriggan, this is the first smart town in Ireland. Um, so that's a big achievement. Uh, a lot of the other districts are, are focused on the business community and in colleges. So it's great to have a focus on a community like Balbriggan. Um, and it's also uh, Fingal's first smart di district, you know, so it's great to be part of the smart Dublin umbrella group here. Um, you'll have already heard from the other presenters there. Um, what we're hoping to do is basically solve local challenges using smart technology and working in collaboration with other stakeholders to solve these challenges. In terms of how we came up with our programme framework, just to share with you how we came up with that in the first place, um, some of you might have attended our original launch uh, of Smart Balbriggan back in June 2020. We had more than 160 people at that webinar, which was a great turnout and, you know, is testament basically to the high level of engagement that uh, we've got from, from the people of Balbriggan on the rejuvenation plan. So those 160 people heard about how we were starting off um, they were asked to participate in a community survey and we got a fantastic response back from the people of Balbriggan. More than 200 people volunteered their ideas and observations on what they thought Smart Balbriggan should be, where we should go, what our focuses should be. So um, we got a huge number of ideas from that. So following on from that, the steering committee that was established with representation from um, Fingal County Council, from Smart Dublin, from the community uh, as well, and from DCU. We looked down through all of the ideas that came in, so we had a massive spreadsheet that we went down through and looked at all the ideas to see could we make sense of them. And from that, we came up with um, the programme framework. Basically, we have come up with three strategic priorities, uh, which we'll bring you through now. Um, the first of those is community building. So Balbriggan is known to be a young and diverse town and we want to build on that identity. We want it to be forward thinking and a dynamic place. So we, we really want to build on that. So that's going to be one of our key strategic priorities as we move forward. The next thing we're looking at is economic growth. We want to make sure that we get the message out there that Balbriggan is open for business. and We want to leverage all the opportunities we can uh, in terms of job creation and economic growth. And finally, the third thing that is go we're going to be focusing on is improving services and the public realm. So we want to see how can we deploy smart technology to better serve the public. 
So there'll be some projects around that. So under these strategic priorities, um, we've pulled together all the ideas that were put forward into basically five objectives. So all of these objectives are on our Trello board. Um, part of the ethos of the, the Smart Dublin concept is basically openness and transparency. So everything we're doing is going to be put up on this Trello board. You're going to find sections up there in corporate governance. So you'll be able to see the minutes of the steering group meetings as we work through things. All the projects that we're doing, you'll be able to log in, see where they're at. And it's going to be a live environment. We're going to be constantly updating that. So every time you click in, if there's new projects coming along, you're going to be able to see them up, going up on the Trello board and where we're at and what we're doing with them. So in terms of those objectives, I'll just run through them real quick because obviously um, we'll be putting up the link to the Trello board probably in the chat or in the Q&A and you'll be able to log in and spend a bit more time having a look at them yourself. But the first objective is to improve the attractiveness of the town. So when we talk about that, we're, we're grouping projects and actions to do with connectivity, remote working, the IoT hub, um, smart furniture. So all of those kind of projects are going to fall in under that first objective. Second objective is about enhancing citizen engagement. So that is to do with the hackathon, which you've heard about, and um, various other bits and pieces like the 3D model, which Ashley kind of gave you a run through, and she'll be posting that model up shortly and she'll be giving links to that as well. The third objective is around improving mobility. So we're looking at sustainable modes and how technology can help improve that. So that's harking back to the WeCount presentation that Ashley Lennon would have brought you through. Um, objective four is to do with local sustainability and green initiatives. I did see some questions in the Q&A there about uh, recycling and sustainable and green initiatives, etc. So objective four is where those things are going to come in. And you can see we have a few actions there as well, but you know those are going to grow and develop over the lifetime of Smart Balbriggan. And the final objective is to do with digital upskilling and job creation. So that's where we're going to have projects to do with our IoT and uh, makerspace projects. So those are our objectives. So I highly recommend you go have a look at our Trello board and keep checking in with us so that you can see what kind of progress we're making. Ashing, I'm going to hand back to you now. That's great. Thanks, Aoife. Um, yeah, so we have a number of questions of uh, how can we find out more information? So it's great that you ran over the Trello board again, because as we um, update people, I have a, a, a question coming in there about the 3D model and where will that be available? So all of our projects, all of the links to these projects and where the video is or where the web viewer is for the model, all of that information will be will be stored in this kind of one source uh, on this Trello board. The link was given um, in the in the chat. You'll see it on the top of the, the Q&A. You should see the link, um, but uh, Lisa might post it again for us in case anyone's having difficulty finding it. I do have um, one question in that I might put to either um, uh, Caitlin, Sophie or Brefney. It's around the hackathon. So um, the question that we have in is um, what what is the envisaged age range or demographics of people to take part in this hackathon for Balbriggan? Do you want to say hello? Yep. So uh, we have it set up right now for anybody over 18. So we'd love to get a big range of people. We've had events before where we had uh, I think the youngest was 18 and the oldest was in his 60s. So um, just over 18 because of we want you to be we need people to be adults because it's online or legally adults because it's online. But no, there's no upper limit. Yeah, the better like the more diverse that one team would be, the better it is because we can have different point of view, like what the young people from Batbergen think the future should be and people that live there uh, that are in their 40s with family uh, think as well. So, OK, and if if somebody has uh, wants to take part in the hackathon, but they don't have a team and they don't really know how to start or how to go about it, um, what would you recommend? So sign up 
for stuff, sign up. And if you uh, if you don't have a team, no problem. I will put you with uh, people who kind of fit around your skill set. So when you sign up, you have to answer a few questions just so we know your background and your interests and why what your goals are for joining. And I will match you up with uh, like minded people with different skill sets. So you guys have a similar goal for the team, but you all fill out the different um, different parts of how you need to get that goal uh, created. So and if you're not sure where to start beyond that, don't worry, we will tell you. Um, I have tons of slides and templates and we'll use lots of virtual sticky notes so uh, you won't. Nobody will be lost uh, once they get there. And you meet great people there. I met Caitlin, Caitlin Hackerton and usually you will show that the per one person that is in your team will stay in your network for the next couple of years. That's great. Thanks. Um, one question I think um, for you, Will, you might take it on. Um, how uh, do you have any examples of how this IoT network is currently being used? Yeah, so uh, sorry, I'll just turn on my video again. Yeah, so we, we've a lot of different use cases at the at the moment. It's used a lot. Uh, in the logistics space, so anything around asset tracking um, and also security is 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 a really big use case at the moment. So um, uh, alarm systems, for example, <clears throat> as a backup connection, they can be connected to the, to the network. Um, we have a lot of deployments around environmental sensing, so the sensing of uh, of of carbon monoxide or other particle matters. Again, uh, it fits really well with this type of technology because you can deploy it, um, and it doesn't. The the device doesn't need to be powered uh, by mains power. It can last on a battery life uh, of ten plus years on three AA batteries, sending back you know data every hour with temperature, humidity, um, and air quality. So that would be a, another good use case. Um, in in there's actually uh, we have a number of our um, of our ecosystem partners who have uh, have um, joined some of the Smart Dublin uh, SPIR initiatives. So one is around water safety um, and uh, and the life rings, um, uh, trying to I suppose track the life rings that are de that are deployed around the country for water safety, coming up with a way of of uh, of understanding where these assets are and if they're being used and alerting the service, um, uh, the emergency services around this. So again, uh, I think there's five or six companies that were selected to 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 enter into that initiative, and most of them are using the 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 network technology uh, that we have because it allows them again to deploy these sensors um, uh, for uh, years on the same battery and at a very low cost. And uh, yeah, that's that. That, that would be a good kind of overview of some of the use cases. That's great. I'm glad you mentioned um, that particular project because we um, we do uh, we are using Balbriggan as a pilot for that Ring Boys project. Um, yeah. So the fact now that we have the IoT network in place means that I suppose we can deploy that really quickly. Um, yeah. So small sensors are being deployed on these Ring Boys so that if if one gets removed it'll send a, um, a text or information to the council so we'll be able to replace that ring boy whereas before you know it could take a number of days before it's even noticed if it was gone so it's a really really I suppose important bit of smart technology that's been deployed um, yeah, I just have one other question here that I'm not too sure who to put it to either. Maybe um, I'll throw it at Brefni or Ashling Lennon, perhaps. Um, so I'm a computer science teacher in a local school. How do you envisage class groups or teenagers getting involved in Smart Belt Riggan? So I suppose it's quite broad and we might have some examples, Ashling Lennon, of some of the other districts or even some of the projects we're working on at the moment and uh, the likes of the weekend, but you might give us your input there. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, do contact us at the smart.balbergen uh, at fingal.ie uh, email address and we'll connect with you. We would be delighted to do um, some workshops with schools to engage with schools. There are some really interesting projects that I can't 
I can't speak about at the moment because they're coming down the line, but they are very school focused and they will be launched very soon. And we will be doing a bit of outreach for um, in Balbriggan to make sure that we have some of our schools represented there where we'll have um, basically some smart city education programs running uh, in the next year. But we do we do want to hear from you if you're interested. We can send you um, maybe like videos. We can send you other presentations. Do get in contact with us uh, via that email address. Just quickly to follow that up. I mean that that's great, and it's great to see the uh, interest from schools and uh, and uh, the TU Dublin and and one or two others there. I can see in the uh, questions and answers. Uh, we are really keen uh, in terms of Smart Balbriggan and the whole Our Balbriggan proposition to engage with our younger people. Uh, I mean, we're the youngest town or youngest population uh, in Ireland, so uh, young people means talent, uh, and we'd love to uh, engage uh, you know, with your school, with your classrooms, uh, and with the various different studies you're doing. So, uh, so please do uh, email us on that email, smart.babrigan at fingal.com i.e. and absolutely will take up every one of those uh, uh, offers and opportunities so thanks so much that's great thank you very much um i i'm conscious that it, we're just gone past the deadline we're just gone past half seven so we do have some other questions but i might just um we might not have all the answers right now, so I might just formulate them all together, send them on to our speakers, and we'll be putting all the question and answers up onto the Trello board in the next couple of days. So do um, take uh, a look at the Trello board, look at all the projects. One of the big call to actions for today is, I suppose we wanted to make awareness of the district, um, of the programme framework, of the Trello board, all, of all the different projects we're starting to work on. But we also want your feedback. So we want uh, to hear, um, you know, is like that school that is the school interested in Balbriggan to get involved more in the district. We want to hear who wants to get involved and if you have ideas for projects as well, because I suppose as Aoife said at the um, at the start and at the end of uh, this webinar that um, it's an iterative process and we are developing the district and all of our, our information on the Trello board is uh, live and um, we're going to be developing all these programs and initiatives over the next couple of months and years. So um, the more involvement in community groups and in um, schools and businesses in Balbriggan, the better for the district itself. So with that said, I just wanted to thank, first of all, all of our attendees for sticking with us. We still have most of you here, so that's a good sign. Um, I also wanted to thank all of our speakers, especially um, for joining us today and giving their time and the presentations. Um, and also behind the scenes, we have Lisa in IT. So thanks so much, Lisa, for helping us out today. Um, I'm going to let you all go and enjoy your evening. So thanks very much, everyone. And um, we'll be in touch over email over the next couple of days we'll be putting up the recording and making that available through the Trello board and through our social media channels through the Arabelle Brigham um, social media channels so um, keep an eye out and do get in touch um, through smart.balbriggan at fingal.e. Thanks.